Through the papers, we're joined this morning by the former editor of the Daily Star, Dawn Neeson, the political editor of The Sun on Sunday, David Wooding. And if you were watching last hour, Dawn was teasing us all with all the juicy details in the Jerry Hall and Rupert Murdoch divorce. Yes. In a lot of the papers well, this morning. Well, is it a divorce? Well, exactly. Ah. Fell us in. It is, I'm afraid. It's okay. not It's not Romeo and Juliet here. I don't think there's going to be a happy ending. Obviously, as the front page of the Daily Mail, mystery as Jerry withdraws LA divorce papers. And you think, oh, I wonder what's going on there. So it's done its job. Um, basically, she filed for divorce in California, but only after being presented with an email from Rupert Murdoch saying, that's it, it's over, I want a divorce. So she filed in Los Angeles Superior Court to say... OK, I want divorce. And that's 50-50 in that state. Now, that was quite an aggressive action on her behalf. She filed divorce papers as he was getting on a jet. She hired her, um, a former Met Police and terrorism officer to serve the papers to him. And I think Murdoch has been taken by surprise by how fiercely Jerry has responded to him saying, I want a divorce, by email. I mean, who does that, by the way? So what she's done now, she's gone back to the Los Angeles court and said, OK, I'm withdrawing the divorce papers... But for now, it's not, it doesn't need to be forever, but she's done it for now. And I, I, what, the, what is going on behind the scenes is that I think Rupert Murdoch and his lawyers have thought, right, OK, she is actually not going to take this lying down, so we will actually now settle. So I think what they've both done, oh, I think, I, sorry, I know, I want it to be sort of like, oh, my God, they've rediscovered their passion for one another. Um, but I, I think... I think the aggression with which she responded to his dismissive email means that legal experts have advised both of them to settle a divorce and not go to court because it would get messy. Mm. And especially seeing as it was in uh, Los Angeles where it's a 50-50 split on property and everything else like that. So he I had think a lot to lose. He had a lot She's to lose. She's played a blinder, frankly. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, th I think, because let's face it, Isabel, I mean, getting an email saying, right, that's it, our marriage is over. I mean, it's well, not who exactly... Who knows what's gone on there, but interesting um, twist. So, David, this is a very, very sad story you're going to in the, the Daily Mail. And for the first time, we see a picture of a little uh, Sahara Salman, uh, the little girl, four years of age, killed Aww. in the house explosion in Thornton Heath in South London. And, I mean, when you look at it, there's just nothing left of that house. I mean, what an explosion that must have been. It's a heartbreaking story, but it's also... Um uh, a deeply, deeply disturbing story because... What a beautiful-looking child. Absolutely, yes. Um, and the, 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 the Daily Mail have got a, a bit of an interview with a mother who says, uh, the world is so cruel, uh, we've lost our daughter, who's our pride and joy. And any, any parent who looks at that picture this morning, as you rightly say, Eamon, would, would be uh, heartbroken and feel very, very sad for them. But when you hear the background to what happened, it's, uh, it, it makes you angry as well as sad because she report, the mother reported the smell of gas back in July, late July, uh, and they sent somebody out to look at it, so the Southern Gas Network, and they said there were no major issues. They could smell gas, but there were no major issues, but they would get a more senior person to come out and have a look. That more senior person didn't arrive, and then the explosion happened. Uh, she was in the box room of the house. Uh, and so the mother's with, in another room with the two other children. And she can't. And when she goes into that room, the room has collapsed and she's lost her little one. Uh, so, of course, you know, now they've gone and investigated it and they've evacuated rows of houses. Several houses in the area have been evacuated. So there clearly is a major problem there with gas. And so not only was poor Sahara... Uh, killed as a result of this, neg what could be negligence. Uh, other people's lives have been at risk too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's outrageous. So it's, uh, it, I'm sure there'll be more, more from this as uh, the investigation goes it's underway. A week, just a week before her fifth birth. Shocking, yeah. And, and it's like, you know, it's like a worker who investigated found lots of, loads of little gas leaks. Hello, do something about it. Oh, that's really mm. frightening. Oh, awful. Um, Dawn, let's take a look at the situation with uh, refugee hosts. This was such an amazing story when uh, British people really stepped up to the plate and, you know, when the government perhaps was a bit slow in issuing visas, British people threw open their doors with open arms, welcoming in Ukrainian uh, refugees. And now it seems as though a quarter of those families don't want to continue it beyond it's the six months. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you know, we, we really did everything and, and a lot of families are still sort of like, you know, being in refuge in this country. Um, however, I think that what this boils down to, it's not sort of like that the refugees are causing problems. It's the, the rising cost of living 
um, is making families that have acted as hosts for refugees um, coming over here think that we can't afford to, you know, as we keep going on about the choice of heating and eating, especially coming in the winter, we can no longer carry on afford to be doing this. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, at the moment, if you are hosting a refugee family, you get £350 uh, a month. But our, um, it's, it's, as you say, it's like 25% found that they, they don't want to do it anymore because it is just too expensive for them. This is from an our, um, Office for National Statistics study. And sort of like 38%, so we continue hosting arrangements for longer than six months, but 23% would be happy to host refugees more than a year. But they do, they all say, literally all of them say, that the, the money they receive for doing so is so important. As I said, it's, it, it's down to financial issues rather than there being a problem with the actual refugees. And it is just sad that, you know, obviously we, we talk about the, the cost of living crisis so much at the moment, but it, it has ripples throughout everything that's going on yeah. in society, doesn't it? I mean, even affecting these poor families that are, are fleeing from the war in the Ukraine. And you forget about those, those, those side effects yeah. of what we're all going through at the moment. And that government handout, the £350 a month, that's finishing next month. Yes, it? and that's so what that's this, yeah, that's what they're saying. Look, if this carries on, mm -hmm. we, we would be willing to, yeah. to, to carry on helping. And a lot of families, obviously, when you have someone living well, unless you've got a mansion, Isabel, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of, you know, it's, it's about more than just offering people a room. You are there offering emotional support, advice, so many problems things. Problems with languages. Exactly. And, and all of that. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been amazing what people have done. I can't uh. blame them, can you? Let's go to the Express, and this is about the uh, debate last night on uh, GB News, um, the People's Forum, uh, which had a chance to question uh, Conservative leadership candidate Liz Truss, David. Yes, it was more of a laid-back affair. I, I, I thought this was quite a good format. Alistair Stewart, your colleague, was, uh, was really tough with, with Liz. Um, and, yes, um, it brought her out in a, a different light. Some of, your, some of the, the, the viewers and the people in the Working Men's Club asking her questions. She talks about uh, using British law to protect the Rwanda plan. Uh, and, and some of her staff were out, 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 away from the cameras saying that um, Rish, Rishi Sunak has never cut tax in his life, which is so, so the gloves are still off a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, interesting, interesting thing on this page that really grabbed my attention yes. away from the debate was the picture of Rishi Sunak's shoe. Um, there's a hole in the shoe. Now, this is a, a multi-billionaire, multi-millionaire. He's worth £730 million and he wears £490 Prada loafers and everybody's so telling site. us... To a building site, to a building site he wore there. And to, everyone's telling us, you know, he, he, he's, um, he's not one of us because he's got so much money. I wonder whether he's wearing these shoes just to, deliberately showing them to the camera. Or to, is he just working so hard out on the beat, meeting people, going to hustings, you and know... he's worn out his shoe leather. Worn out his shoes. Yeah. Um, yeah, just on how much he's worth, I was really... Actually, he's worth more than the Queen. His, his personal wealth is more than the Queen, yes. I think, 700 no. and something. Well, yes, it's not yes. his personal it's wealth. His, it's it his is. wife. It's well, his wife's well, side. Well, OK, it's sorry, I didn't know... You know, when you're married, it's usually your mm. family wealth. I'm sure Prince Philip benefited from Her Majesty's yes, wealth as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, anyway. Um, but the hole in the shoe, do you buy it, Dawn? <laughs> no, I mean, look, I, I, I'm just getting sick of the whole thing. I just want them to get on with stuff now. I mean, yeah, I yeah. think Rishi is making, on average, 2.7 promises a day <laughs> and, and Liz 2.6 promises a day. <laughs> and it's like, I mean, between them, it's like how many of those, whichever one wins, are actually going to be put into action? And they've got an election about two years down the road. Thanks. So will they You're have anything healthy. left to, to promise? You're Can't not wait. Healthy, Can't David. wait. So uh, we hear that despite the lovely weather, despite the lovely summer and whatever it is, people are really worried about it. They feel guilty about it. Are uh, you enjoying think, it? I am enjoying it. Yeah, are you I mean, out on a sun lounger? Yes. Going for ice cream? Yes. Yeah. Work, work gets in the way. Um, but I've had opportunities over the past three weeks or so to enjoy uh, things and uh, I think very, very pleasant. But I do think there is, Dawn, a, a guilt with people um, when you're not supposed to enjoy this because this is climate change and there are fires oh. happening and, and things like that. So, I mean, you know, they're probably, you know, it's school holidays now. How many people will be headed off to the seaside Can, can we just yeah. actually have a bit of a nice time as well? Yeah. I mean, not every event happening in our lives at the moment is some sort of zombie apocalypse that's going to kill us all next week. Yes, there is a, um, a heat wave. Yes, there is a climate issue we need to think about and deal about. But also, it is the school summer holidays. Let little kids go and play on the beach and enjoy themselves. 
Stop terrorising, certainly the children, let them be kids. But this is a story, seamless link in the Daily Mirror today, page three. And uh, 26 degrees centigrade is too hot to handle. That's the temperature where we struggle to do basic everyday things. Any hotter than that and we're going, right, it's too hot, can't do it. Yeah. And we're talking about things like blow drying your hair, obviously never do that, um, and even wearing clothes. <laughs> now, 26 degrees isn't that hot. I'm going to keep my clothes on, especially if I'm going around Tesco's. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's not a good house. look. You know, even, if you've got a new so... built house, as soon as my kids are in the door, they're into their pants. Yeah. It's been I... like that for weeks and weeks yeah, now. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, this is it. 2,000 people, this is a survey, 2,000 people. Driving, tidying up and DIY featured too in the top 20 list of things to be avoided when the temperature goes about 26 degrees. It doesn't degrees. take much for me to avoid. I was just...